Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm very nervous to do this video. You know, usually get on here to nerd out over Star Wars or Marvel or DC or do makeup or do fun vlogs and stuff like that, but it's not great all the time. And I know nobody feels great all the time, but I want to share with you guys, both for people who might be experiencing this, because it's rare, and for people who don't know, want to know a little bit more, I can understand where I'm coming from from a lot of this stuff. I'm doing a bit- oh, I might cry. <laughs> I'm feeling so anxious doing this right now. I am doing a video about my physical health, we're not going to go into my mental health, because I need my own thing on that. If you're not feeling into this, that's fine, you don't have to watch this, so um, I'm just trying to help and, you know, share my story. I have a desmoid tumor in my left knee. It bulges out, you can see it come out. It is on the outside of my knee. Um, so like facing away from my other leg. I was diagnosed with it I think in about March of 2019 so uh, I've, I've been dealing with this for quite a while but um, as I was gonna kind of say earlier um, I've had a lot of pain from it before I knew what it was I had gone to doctors so many times and they had told me that there was nothing wrong and that was obviously far from the truth. Um, if you're gonna get go to a doctor in Florida, maybe go to like Orlando. Don't go to a little bum town that doesn't really know what they're talking about. Preferred. So I got here and I had enough of it because it was painful. I could see it bulging out of my leg and it's to the point where I couldn't walk um, on my left leg. I had to limp. Um, I would collapse in public. It was not fun. And I had a lot of stuff done. I had an ultrasound, I had an x-ray, and then I finally had an MRI. Not once that I had an MRI done until I was here in New York. And they were like, why was an MRI not done? That sounds like they thought it was a meniscus tear because of the, the pain and mobility of my leg. They thought I tore my meniscus. But I had a desmoid tumor. So a desmoid tumor is technically a non-cancerous tumor. They're benign, but they're not benign in the way a cyst is benign, like it'll just sprout up and stay there and then you can remove it and you can just go about your day. It's benign in the sense that it's non-cancerous, meaning it doesn't spread the way cancer does. However, some scientists consider um, the other name for like the, so the disease that causes desmoid tumors, which would be aggressive, aggressive fibromatosis, they consider that to be uh, a form of cancer, they consider it to be a cancer causer, it is 100% a cancer causer. Um, de dealing with genetic mutations that I would have never known about. I had no inclination that I had these. I couldn't get surgery to get it removed because it was growing into my nerves, which is why I couldn't walk and I was having a lot of pain and I was collapsing because it's causing it was growing into, you know, nerves which caused the pain sensation to going up my entire body. If I had not caught it and it continued to grow, I would have become paralyzed on the left side of my body. I'm so upset, I was so upset, I still am, to know that I had this growing inside me and I had been told for years that nothing was wrong with me. And it's, it, it's huge. As far as I remember, they had told me it's like this big. What did I do moving forward? So I couldn't get surgery, I was told that, and I had to go to an oncologist, which oncologists are cancer doctors, just because even though it's not cancerous, I still have to go through the exact same thing in terms of treatment and in terms of um, appointments that people with cancer do, just a little bit less often and at a lesser dose. So we spoke um, about 
all of this. Um, I'm gonna kind of go through stuff. I didn't write anything down, so it's gonna be very sporadic, but um, I am on a, they put me on a medication, which I found out afterwards is a trial because there is no cure for a desmoid tumor. There's no cure for aggressive fibromatosis. It's extremely rare genetic disorder that they don't really know what to do with. Again, like I said earlier, scientists don't even know how to classify it. Some classify it in the cancer category because it grows and is invasive the way the cancer is. It just doesn't spread in the same capacity that cancer would spread. Um, it's not like dealing entirely with the complete mutation of cells. It has to do more with like there's an issue with trying to, with like muscle, trying to repair muscles. Um, and repair tissues. That's that's what desmoid tumors are kind of, they, they're they like a defect because your body can't figure out how to do something. So I got put on a trial medication called uh, serafinib. It's also called Nexavar. It's a chemotherapy pill. Uh, before this, I didn't know that there was chemotherapy in pill form. I thought it was just all radiation. That's actually called radiation therapy. Most people assume when you say chemotherapy, that's what they mean. And if you do, um, as far as I know, I've not had to do it. That was an option. Um, just to let you know, there are a few options. If you do have desmoid tumors, what's they'll go about? They can offer you chemotherapy. Sorry, there's a lot of noise and the lighting just changed. That's when the light on get way too dark in here. It was offered radiation therapy. I was offered, um, surgery was out. It's one of the options for desmoid tumors, but for me, where it was growing, it was out. There were this, what I went with, and then also some sort of hormonal therapy, which um, at the time, I was 21 years old, so that can pre cause premature um, menopause. And I don't really want to experience menopause 30 years early, so um, I went with, with, with these. These are a chemotherapy drug. What they're actually meant for, because like I said, this is a trial, they're actually meant to treat kidney, liver, and thyroid cancer. Um, it also leukemia. I know leukemia was a big one. I don't know why it's not listed here. Um, but leukemia is a very big one it's used to treat, so kids. Um, this is at a half dose, so I take two pills a day. If you have cancer and you are on this the oral chemotherapy, you would take four pills a day. However, that being said, I have all of the chemotherapy side effects. No matter how half dose I'm at, I deal with it every single day. Okay, I don't wanna cry. I can go over the side effects and kind of my day to day. Um, I'm going to do something that I'm extremely self-conscious about, which if you watch my videos closely, you'll notice. Um, I mean, I edit it out, so I guess you wouldn't really notice, but I edit out any time I turn around. Um, in my video and I have a wig because I lost two-thirds of my hair. I wear headbands for this reason. I know nobody said anything and I appreciate that nobody said anything because it makes me very uncomfortable. Um, not to point out my hair or my wig, um, but to point out anything with my real hair. I mean, I don't think any of you are really that cruel, but and I know it's like, I can notice it, but like, you can tell. You looked, you could tell. Um, you just don't realize I've gone through this because I'm not, I have not shaved my head. Like, people assume that those on chemo just shave their head or lose all their hair. It's because they shave it. Um, because they don't want to deal with bald spots and then it's easier to wear a wig. However, I'm not going to wear my wig every day because it's crazy. Um, but yeah, time's where it looks like my hair is not brushed and all that. I, I brush my hair multiple times a day. I put stuff in it. I try to get it to look fine. It doesn't look fine. Um, yeah, so it is wispy, which is great. That means it's growing back, but I lose so much hair single day. I know it sounds ridiculous that I'm upset about losing hair. But it's, it's really upsetting to me. It was my favorite thing, like, favorite feature I've had was my hair. Like, I can wear wigs, but... I have 
Let's see, that's finally here. I don't have any here at all anymore. So if my hair looks bad, just don't say anything. Um, I have a variety of um, foods I can't eat, shouldn't eat. Um, the most common side effect other than hair loss is nausea as well as assistant use of the bathroom. I'll just put it that way. I'm lucky in the fact that I don't uh, and sorry if you don't want to watch some of this stuff, it can be pretty graphic. I don't throw up very often, so that's great. I still do. I'd say I do about once a week. I'm nauseous every single day. There is not a day that goes by that I'm not, that two hours of the day I'm not sick to my stomach. And that's like light. It's usually most of the day. It causes depression, but I already had that, so it doesn't really matter. Um, because you feel bad about yourself, so of course you're gonna get depression. Because of nausea, there are so many foods that I can't eat. Um, literal laundry list. I can give you some. It's basically lots of things that are high in fiber or things that are high in fat. So um, any fried foods, so anything with your oils, any sort of oil, olive oil, canola oil, anything like that. Olives, really bad. Um, bread. I've always been not really able to process bread, but um, especially now. Um, lettuce, spinach, favorites, chickpeas. Spinach, chickpeas are very high in fiber. Um, I've always been lactose intolerant, so makes it worse. So literally like anything like that. I can't eat or I do and I feel disgusting. Red meat, um, which people would say you shouldn't really eat anyway. So I can have a bunch of bland unseasoned food. Which, um, if you follow Odd's Kitchen, that's not happening. I'll just get sick anyway. <sighs> um, also a interesting one that again is gross, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show it. Um, I'll let it up to, leave it up to the imagination. Um, is something called hand foot syndrome. I'll show it a little bit on my hands because I have some on my hands. Um, that's not, you know, Casey having scratched me. So it's basically your hands get your hands and feet get so dry, um, and the lack of moisture causes um, callusing and uh, tears in the skin, and they can bleed and stuff like that. I don't ha I haven't had any bleeding on the feet, which is great. I've had it on the hands; they get dry and cracked and start bleeding. And I'm not talking like, wow, I put my lotion on once a day and all this sort of stuff. No, I put lotion on my hands once every 10 minutes. Like my hands are uncomfortable right now and I put lotion on 10 minutes ago. Um, you can't do things with your hands. You can't walk around barefoot at all, which I used to do all the time because I'm from Florida and we don't wear shoes in the south. Um, I, I have to wear shoes at all times. I usually have to wear sneakers. I can't wear like any sort of tight fitting shoe, anything that doesn't have a big um, comfortable heel. I have to Make sure to moisturize my feet, which apparently you should be doing anyway, but it's so weird and you just don't love it. And if you're gross about feet, sorry. <laughs> Literally, it's like your body just can't retain moisture. Also, you can't take, you can't eat grapefruit because apparently chemo is this all-powerful drug unless grapefruit interacts with it and grapefruit breaks down chemo, which is wild. But I will show you on my right hand. Um, see this right here? It looks like a freckle. It's not. It is where my hand had started bleeding. I mean, my hands look really red and raw because um, they're really dry. Um, I was putting my desk chair together and it was literally like 20 minutes in and my hands just started to bleed. I, it was so painful. Um, I'm currently using the Jurian's lotion. Um, I think the Trader Joe's one's the best, just as an FYI. Weight gain or weight loss Weight loss tends to be if, you know, you're not eating, so that would make sense. Um, ble excessive bleeding, so that does make sense. Um, I haven't dealt with this. Um, I thought it would have been kind of funny, but I haven't had to deal with this. Um, I've dealt with this in a, in a little bit. Like, my hands start bleeding. It's excessive bleeding. Um, if, like, I scrape something, it, I bleed a little bit more than usual. Um, but 
they had said like it can cause your nose to start bleeding so it would look like a cocaine addict which i think I don't know, that would be that people would just think all sorts of things about me this is voice changes have you noticed any voice changes for me lately also like um cold and flu symptoms which went in the era of covid is very scary but like i wake up sometimes and um and there, people have these all the time from other things it's your body just this is how your immune system fights it's like it has three responses and they're all covid symptoms um it's just like sore throat coughing stuff like that i get that it, it's like it's pretty common with this too thyroid issue have that because of this it can affect your thyroid so i had to get on some sort of thyroid medication honestly i can't let you know if my thyroid is too high or too low i don't know what it means it can cause high blood pressure um and i have to do my blood pressure get my blood pressure read i have a monitor so i do it once a week i don't really i do it when i feel bad which is probably not good because then you know it's going to average out that you're feeling bad and there's a lot of blood sugar issues um, just because I'm not eating as much, um, because of feeling sick constantly, so then it causes my blood sugar to be off, um, blood, so blood pressure, um, but they had told me, because I had ended up going to the ER because of stuff, um, your blood pressure is high, your, no, your blood pressure is low, your heart rate is high, um, and then you immediately need to get, uh, blood, labs done, blood work, and it's, if you're, it can, it can be a sign of sepsis, which is like, um, just, it's an infection. You can get it from nearly anything, but like if you leave a cold untreated, they'll turn into pneumonia and stuff like that. Obviously, like, example, COVID's turning into pneumonia a lot. Um, it's like leaving the sickness for any period of time is allowing itself to mutate and get worse. That's pretty much what that is. The sepsis scare. It ended up being fine. I got tested later. It was fine. But it was from a cold. <laughs> it was from a common cold. So um, this medication also causes you to become immunocompromised, meaning your immune system does not work. Um, you get a cold, it could be the end. Like, that, it's that serious. So um, with COVID, it's very scary. Your, your immune system doesn't work. So it's, yeah, exactly. It causes heart and a heart issue. Um, heart failure, so like <laughs> shortness of breath, which is another COVID symptom. A lot of this stuff is basically if you have some sort of heart attack that can arise. But like, like I said earlier, that tends to be the more usual one. Uh, tiredness, I tend to be kind of sleepy. I have so many medical issues that cause tiredness that I don't even know what is causing it. So like, that's my issue with half of this stuff. That's pretty much the overview of these pills. When I go to the doctors, the other thing is you have to have a lot of tests done. So, um, I, every three months I have to get, it started off every month and then once it kind of, like, things started getting into the pace of it, it's every three months, I have to get labs and have an appointment. Um, I usually have an appointment every six months, but I consistently have labs every three months so that my doctor can look at them. I, again, similar thing with MRIs, I have to have an MRI now, it's at every six months, it was at every three months, but... It's a very slow growing and a very slow ungrowing, dissolving tumor. So there's not much progress each time, but it's getting less defined, which I guess is good. Moving forward, I'm probably not gonna be able to get it removed. I don't know. I've talked to my doctor about how long I'll have to be on this medication. He won't give me straight answers. So that's always a good sign. He said, oh, well, you know, now that you know that it works for your body once we get the tumor down to a certain size then we can take you off for a little bit and then go back on it later so I'm like so we're not getting rid of it that's not the goal here and then that's when I found out that I'm in a clinical trial it's not even proven to work so and that's the desmoid tumor in terms of the mutation there are two so I have CTNNB1 which is a gene. It is um, mutated at uh, 20%. PMS2, which is uh, at 41%. Um, CTNNB1 is just like, it's a, it's, it's a gene that makes protein. 
it's about DNA. So it's like your gene doesn't work and you can't produce protein to it, so the DNA comes together all wonky. It's the mutation. PMS2 is the not good one. Um, it's a gene that causes cancer, particularly colon, um, stomach, liver, thyroid, kidney, and um, ovarian. So ovarian and um, uh, colon being the deadliest cancers. I don't know. Quote, don't quote me on that. Aggressive fibromatosis also causes polyps, which are basically little growths, little tumors, to grow on your colon. I've had a lot of abdominal pain. I have not gone to a genet genetic counselor, which I need to, and I need to get a colonoscopy even though colon cancer doesn't tend to develop until you're older, it can develop earlier. And if I have this genetic mutation and aggressive fibromatosis, it's pretty much guaranteed that you have polyps on your colon and that you will develop colon cancer at some point in your life. Um, I know people try to talk me out of thinking in that way. I know that we're trying to think positively in terms of the medical industry. Um, Research-wise, financially, I have a lot of thoughts about those, too. And that, yeah, you know, things can get better by by then, you know? We, are, we can advance in, in research and stuff like that. And, like, we haven't even cured cancer. We haven't even found out how to really treat a lot of term, types of cancer. And I'm, I'm glad it's a point where I'll be at least monitored regularly, and that's a blessing, and that it won't be a situation like I would get phase three or phase four cancer sprung on me, but it's guaranteed. It, it's a guarantee. By certain ages, um, late 20s, it's about a 50% chance that you already have colon cancer. Late 30s, it's up to 75, and then if you're 40, 40 plus, it's 90% of people with this genetic mutation develop colon cancer. We're not sitting here to 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 cry about the end end of my days and stuff like that, but it's I want people to understand where I'm coming from and if you have this I don't want to scare you. But I want you to sit here and understand and and be real. Um you know your health more than anybody but clearly, some doctors don't know what they're talking about. So get a doctor that is going to help you get screened for things regularly and get help um, in any way that means. If it's, and I'm a mental health advocate too, I can sit up here and cry about my mental health if I want to, but this video is already going to be so freaking long. I do want to share um, for anybody going through this and anybody who has money to help donate, um, to cancer care. Um, I was brought to them. I don't necessarily, obviously don't, I don't necessarily have cancer, but I'm able to access their resources because I am a resident and occupant patient at, at um, I'm at Mount Sinai at the, cancer, the Blavatnik Cancer Institute. Um, I'm able to access cancer care resources. Cancer care provides um, Lots of things from monetary resources and free therapy um, to, or at least free or affordable therapy, I think free therapy to um, those who have cancer. So um, if you have it or if you have this, um, definitely go to them. Uh, they can help you. Um, if you have the resources, please donate to them. I will leave a link in the description box. I would love for that. Um, Stop donating to Susan G. What Susan? Whatever Coleman. Whatever her name is, because she has been found to steal the money. Also, don't know if everybody else feels this right way. Who has this? But what the hell is cancer research? What the hell is it paying for? You don't know. You don't know where the money is going. So why don't you just help people who have this? Help them because you know what? I'm three thousand dollars in medical debt, and that's been paid down. I was $5,000 in medical debt. So yeah, really, like, that's a good good one to go for. 
anybody who has sort of GoFundMes or stuff for like that, definitely. Um, this country is atrocious in how you pay for things. I also, in terms of my medication, just as an FYI, without insurance, this medication um, on the dose that I'm on, which is a half dose, costs $10,000 a month. $10,000 a month. That's a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. If you are on the full dose with cancer, that is a quarter of a million dollars a year. So think about that. That that's what Bayer is making off of medication that is supposed to help people. I am on a CVS Caremark program, although they want to forget because they just sent me a bill. Um, that is like a, a assistance program that I don't have to pay for my medicine because my insurance doesn't even cover it 100%. So insurance pays most of it and then CVS will pay the difference to help me get my medication. I don't know if this was just me ranting for 40 minutes or if it was actually a helpful video. Um, anyway, I appreciate you all for listening. I know I had some breakdowns there, so I appreciate you sticking around. I just want people to kind of understand what's going on and I want people to, anybody who needs to kind of hear that you're not alone, whatever this is, to hear it from me. Um, I'm not going to ask for any sort of sticking around, but um, anything would you appreciate, please be um, considerate in the comments. And um, yeah, if you choose to stick around, I will see you on Tuesday for a not so downtrodden serious video, but um, I love you all and I hope you're staying safe. I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.